Um, let me know when we are live. Okay, I have it. We're live. All right, cool. Um, well, hello everyone. Um, I'm Alexandra doing the stream for Run It Once. I'm a professional poker player. Um, I only play cash. And my main stake now is um, 200, 500. I mostly play GG poker. Um, and today we're gonna review some hands played against recreational players because we thought that's a bit of an overlooked topic. And it's actually where most of the money comes from. So yeah, I'm gonna do this this review with my friend and fellow coach Paul. Hey, everyone. Uh, firstly, apologize ap apologies for my mic. We were trying to get it sorted for the stream, but um, hasn't seemed to work. So yeah, bear with me. I know there's a problem with my mic. Um, so yeah, we're both uh, current coaches for Run It Once and for the duration of the stream and for about half an hour to an hour afterwards, there's going to be 50% off Run It Once essential membership. Uh, so you guys can take advantage of that by signing up through the link that we're going to post in the stream now or by typing in stream into the chat yourselves. So yeah, we guess we can just jump in, yeah. review some hands. Uh, yeah, also we do run a Discord community, so if you're interested in joining that and interact more with us, um, we're also going to leave that link in the chat. Right, um, so now let's jump into the hands. So um, these are the hands, a few of them are hands that I played, but most of them are hands from our students played against recreationals, and we think that there are quite a few interesting concepts coming up uh, where you can, you know, print TV and really exploit their, their mistakes. So here we open button, we get called by the small blind. Unfortunately, we don't have stats. We don't really know who the recreationals are and also by big blind. The flop is queen, 10, 9. So now we have a um, cat shot and a flash drop. And small blind goes for a half pot dunk. And as you see, he's short stack. So I think that's quite relevant in this hand. Um, yeah, we're facing a dunk and here we obviously never folding. We have the option to raise or call and our hero decides to go for a call. Um, what do you think about this ball? Um, yeah, I think um, as long as we're not folding, we, we can do anything in this spot, I think, um, and it'll be fine. Uh, the pot is 15 big blinds and Villain only has you know 26 big blinds behind, so I wouldn't even mind if we raise here. We've got a combo draw. Um, if, we, if we raise, we, we, could, um, we, we could raise, we could jam, we can call. I think all options are fine, uh, just based on our hand. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't mind what we do here. Yeah, I think I actually do prefer um, raising to just calling here because I think it's quite often that he might find the shove on the turn and then we're quite in a tough spot. And I think if we, you know, he might also dunk with some really murky hands like 8-9 or so. So I imagine maybe if we raise small here and then shove the turn, we might have a bit more full deck with on some murky hands that, you know, recreationals tend to do this sometimes. Um, so I think raising might overperform a bit, but yeah, also calling is definitely fine. We see a nine on the turn and now we face a pot bat. Um, yeah, this is quite a um, shitty spot, I would say, because we could be that already. But yeah, at the same time, you know, with recreationals, I think it's really, really important to know what their tendencies are. Because I think if we're facing a really, really um, nitty, really, really passive um, face-up recreational, we might even find a fault here sometimes. Although, yeah, I think it we mostly have to get it in. Um, thoughts on this turn? Yeah, I think um, you're right in just... It does depend who we're playing against. If we're against most recreationals, um, I, I would just always be calling. But there are some, uh, you know, there are a few select recreationals where, you know, you never see them dunk uh, or, and continue on the turn here with, with weak hands. Um, 
but yeah, I, 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 I've usually just like be continuing here. Um, we can decide whether we put the money in it on the river. Um, we've got a combo draw, so any jack, any club is, is good for us. And uh, as you say, some recreationals here will just be um, continuing way too wide. I wouldn't be surprised to sometimes see a recreational um, have something like ace 10 here. Um, so sometimes our king out can be good. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't really go fold in this spot unless I had a very specific read. Yeah, yeah, I think it's quite extreme. I was just trying to highlight that there are also um, there are actually people and situation uh, situations where folding this is actually good. Um, our hero goes for a shove, which I mean I guess it's fine at this SPR, um, although. We don't really have fold equity here, um, and we're never really making a better hand fold. So, you know, I think calling here and calling the river only if we hit is probably better. Um, although, you know, there's um, also th those really, really aggressive whales which will just show up here with like Jack Deuce or 2-5. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, against those guys probably just getting it in yeah i think i think all options on flop and uh, uh, you know as in staying in the hand you know calling mm -hmm. or racing in a good with with racing being slightly better and then on the turn i don't think it's a mistake to still get it in because again some recreationals will just turn up here with just a lot of random jack x and, and just some hands that you wouldn't expect to see um so yeah i think as long as we're not folding i think folding would would be the be a mistake mostly yeah yeah i agree um it's quite interesting you know to talk about playing against recreationals without actually knowing who you're playing against because even though there's a lot of um as database analysis out there you know about how recreationals play and so on in reality each of them is so different and can have such a different thought process so some of these hands should probably be played um completely different against different people but um yeah i think this hand was Played fine. We hit on the river, and do we win? What do you think? Do we win? Yeah, I think we win. We, <laughs> we do see aces. Win. Yeah. So seeing seeing all sorts of hands we shouldn't be seeing. Yeah, this makes me think he is actually the kind of really really passive recreational. Yeah. So specifically against this recreational, um, that that term jam. That two in jam could be terrible um, if he's got aces here and, you know, he's only got a real strong range that, that donks and continues on turn. But again, taking notes is really important against recreationals because they will display very different tendencies. Yeah, exactly. Um, should we go to the next end? Are there any questions in the chat? Yeah, so um, Reddit once asks, is, is it fair to say that if we were out of position on the turn here, we would mostly only jam or fold at this SPR? With, with range. Um, so on the turn, if we were out of position here. Yeah, so if we had a, let's just say we, we flat preflop with king seven because there's a recreational in the big blind. And then we face face a, you know, the, the bet on the flop and then a pot size bet on, on the turn. Um... Again, I think it depends on the recreational because you will get some really like with range, it, it would depend because you do get some really wild recreationals who um, are betting with zero equity hands. So I wouldn't be jamming uh, a nine, for instance, um, or any of my stronger hands than a nine um, because they can sometimes just turn up with really wild hands that they're just dribbling off for no reason. Uh, but yeah, in general, I think um, if I had ace queen or king queen, something like this, uh, I, I may, you know, other portions of my range, I think I probably would just play um, jam or fold. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And in general, you know, the concept that applies in pretty much every spot in poker is the more polar your opponent range is, the less we want to raise and the more mergy it is, the more we want to raise because then there's more equity to deny. And the mergy range also contains um, strong draws sometimes. So if this is the kind of guy to just blast off here with every A3 in his range, we probably don't really want to raise as much um especially with good value but yeah against most people i agree with what paul just said 
But one more thing as well, I got it slightly wrong with the uh, Run It Once Essential discount. So if you guys want to sign up for Run It Once and get 50% off, um, if you put discount, hash, uh, yeah, exclamation mark discount into the chat, and then use the code stream uh, when using, uh, when, when signing up and checking out. Right, um, next hand up. Yeah. Nine's open on the button. Um, villain calls on the big blind. I assume we're playing against the recreational as he goes for a dunk. Um, I know this is a spot you put quite a lot of work on. Um, what I would like, what's very common with these um, recreational dunks is they are very trashy or really, really mergy because they tend to, you know, check raise their um, strong hands or check hold to delay check raise. And these um, dunks are very often the type of bats to see where I'm at. So yeah, we can often apply a lot of pressure, but again, I know you've done a bit more work on this. So yeah, what are your thoughts here? Yeah, so as you said, a lot of the time recreationals will telegraph their hand strength through their donk sizing. So when we're seeing um, generally around 60% uh, and below, um, we're often going to see a merge and weak range. So that's going to be hands like 7x, 8x, um, maybe even some ASI hands. And then most of the time, a, a very big quantity of their range is going to be draws. Now, on this board, you might think there's not a lot of draws apart from 5, 6, or 9, 10, or flush draws. But you have to remember, even a hand like 4, 5 is a gut shot, um, 6, 4 is a gut shot, um, uh, jack 10, and jack 9 as well. So there's going to be um, many more draws than, than it first appears, even on a board like this. So yeah, with, with a hand like 9s, and in general, um, I think sometimes you can... Um, a nice way to play is to sometimes find brain raises with some portions of your range. So nines here could be a potentially a, a hand to find a small raise with. And the reason for that is you're going to deny a lot of equity to um, a bunch of those draws. So something like four or five here um, should probably start folding versus the raise. You're also going to be able to get some value from worse hands like 7x and 8x. Yeah. Um, and then you you can often just uh, you know manage the pot size as well by keeping it smaller by checking behind on turns and then uh, rivers as well if if you think um, too much of his range by that time is queen x or if the runout is particularly bad for our hand. Yeah, um, I think you made some very very good points there. Um, also, you know, again, I think the concept that we just talked about applies again here that we expect the range to be quite mergy. So then it is a spot where we should have um, quite a bunch of ranges. And it's common for them to just bat um, like this themselves in order to not face a bat. And again, it's often hands that do have some showdown value. So here um, we can you know, take advantage of that and raise in order to get value from those hands before some scary runouts come and they decide not to call anymore. And of course we get protection from random hands, but we decide just to call, which is fine. Although personally, I think against most recreationals, I prefer raising. Oops. Um, Right, the turn is a 10, bringing us an open-ender and a flush draw. Actually, open-ended, flush, straight draw. <laughs> straight flush draw. Straight flush draw. Oh. <laughs> so many terms in poker, triple, merge, bat, and so on. Um, and our opponent goes for um, half pot dunk again. At this point, Again, it's quite quite difficult to say without knowing anything about our actual opponent. But looking at this hand, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to go for a raise, although we might get some better hands to fold. Um, but I think we just have enough equity and against the recreational range still enough showdown value to just go for a call here. Yeah, I think on this turn, I, I wouldn't be finding raises just because this turn does connect a lot with this donking range. So as we said, he's going to have, um, you know, some nine tens, maybe some ten sixes, um, jack tens type of hands. And all of those connect to this card, um, as well as 
you know, like we said, some of those uh, 10 eights and 10 sevens that we were ahead of on the flop, um, you know, improve as well. So I would, would just approach with a, with a call here. Um, and most of my range, I would, would just be able, like, if I was continuing, I would, I would be mostly calling. If I do have um, the stronger portions of my range, I would look to start to go for a raise here. And that's just because I think a lot of his range here um, will be continuing and will be hands with equity. So he can still have a bunch of hands like, um, you know, 9-7, 8-9, uh, um, those uh, Jack-10 type of hands, Queen-9 type of hands. And, you know, if I've got a flush here, I still think that villain is going to start calling with all of those pair plus gut shot type of hands. Um, I obviously wouldn't be raising too large, maybe maybe only 13, 14 big blinds, but what do you think? Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And I actually wanted to highlight that I, I, I would still have raises here, just not with this hand. Um, but something to keep in mind that I think um, a lot of people might get wrong um, is that they think we need to be balanced against recreationals. So um, in reality, it's not really like that. You know, the EV comes from seeing their mistakes and taking the highest EV play with our hand because they are not um, thinking at a deep level about ranges. You know, they don't really understand the judgment, exploits, bat sizes um, and so on. So we just we should just try to maximize our EV. So um, even though this is a spot we shouldn't really bluff much, if at all, um, if we have really strong value hands, especially if they um, unblock a lot, a lot of their calls. So if we have um, ace deuce of clubs here, for example, I would, I would definitely raise and not really think once about being balanced, you know. I, I think we should definitely fold ace deuce of clubs, but if, if, you, <laughs> meant, if you meant ace deuce of spades, I agree, we should definitely raise ace deuce of spades. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's a really important note. Is um, I think through this whole stream, the the theme that you're going to get with me and Alexandra is we're mostly going to talk about the hand that we're playing, and that is just going to be because against the recreational, we 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 start to disregard our our range and we just play the way our hand wants to play, um, as opposed to when you play against a good uh, regular player, you you think a lot more about in, in terms of your range. Yeah, exactly. And that is also why you won't really see us using solvers today, because um, that's not really the, the best tool to use when playing um, against people who don't know what they are doing. So, um, hero calls here, which I like. And onto the river. The river is an ace, and he goes for um, mean bat here, which I find quite, quite, quite interesting because. Um, thinking of his value range on an ace, that kind of diminishes, but it, when he goes so small, he can still value bet here, hands like a queen, um, sets, I don't know, some people really, really get scared seeing the, um, some, some recreationals really get scared um, when they see the run out being like this, and even saying something like sevens is just worth a small bet, so... I, I wouldn't really read much into this. Um, on the other hand, the the pot odds look quite quite good. Um, let me go back through this hand. Did he? Okay, so. Yeah, I think the pot odds are quite good, but we do block a lot of bluffs. Mm. Do we win here seventeen percent of the times on a three Broadway run out? Against this recreational, I'm not sure. Is it worth the race? What do you think? What would you do? Yeah, I was just um, waiting, you, waiting for you to go through your thought process. And to me, on this river, um, I'm just going to be very aggressive once I see his bet size in. Um, so the way we just talked about us not being very balanced against recreationals, uh, recreationals are also not very balanced against us. So if we saw a regular bet in for a quarter on this run out, um, he right, might recognize that uh, you know the run out hasn't been particularly good for his range. Or um, the, the ten of spades on the turn is is good, but uh, the ace isn't, and maybe he's protecting his um, his range when, when he goes for a smaller size, and he's going to have some strong hands. But against a recreational, I really feel like. 
uh, most recreationals are just playing the strength of their hand. So in this spot here, I would be very aggressive, go for a bunch of raises. Uh, we're blocking some good portions of the range that we want to block. So, um, you know, we're blocking jack nine, which is a straight. Uh, we're blocking nine six, which is a straight. And we're also blocking some flushes uh, with the nine of spades. Um, but most importantly, I think that he's really going to be turning his hand face up here. And I think his hand is going to very often be um, a queen in, in this line when it goes for a, a small, small uh, bet on the flop, uh, medium bet on the turn, and then this very small bet on the river. I think we only need 17% to be correct. So I wouldn't hate if we called um, on the basis that recreational sometimes really don't understand what they're doing. They continue to bet a hand like 4-5 or 8-6 or 8-9. Um, for no rhyme or reason. Um, but yeah, I think I would personally just be very aggressive, go for a big raise here, and I think we're going to find him folding a lot of his range. Um, what do you think? Yeah, 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 I completely agree with you. The reason I was saying, you know, I'm not really sure about this and if it's worth the raise is because, again, I did study quite a bit with um, MDA, and what you see is that when recreationals, but so small on the river, they kind of do have a capped range but also they don't really like folding it but i think this is um an example of a hand where you know it's sometimes it's not really enough to look at mda and see ah this spot this frequency overall is under blocked over folded and so on you also need to you know look at the texture look at the way the hand played out um and look at the run out and here i think he's actually just too capped and it, it does look a lot like you know batting um because he doesn't really want to face a bat the ace on the river really diminishes his value range and as you said um i think if he had the flash it's very very likely he would go bigger um so again i think we should be careful when raising recreationals against these small sizes on the river with a bluff um but i think this is wait, quite a uh, good way to uh, do it uh, don't 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 show results at the moment um the, the one last thing i wanted to say as well is um we, we spoke about how uh, very wide recreationals can dunk on the floor and that's something else that i that i wanted to highlight is that the runouts has not been particularly great for our hand and it has actually improved a recreational who donks way too many hands. So you will just often find some recreationals donk in a hand like ace nine or ace jack at some frequency, um, even some random ace two, ace three, ace four. And you might, you may even see some ace x hands in this line that are going to uh, bet for value, but aren't going to call a raise. Um, and, and again, like we mentioned, some of those ten x hands as well that got there on the turn. So yeah, I think overall, I would, I would look to to mostly raise this. I don't think I would find many calls, even though the pot odds um, are very good for us. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree with your thought process. Um, and let's see what actually happened. Oh, we just called. Yeah, exactly this nightmare. Yeah, quite face up. Um, you know, seeing this, I like to take a quick note that he's um, something like his bad size equaled his um, bad strength. Yeah. Um, and also, I know you're quite a big fan of this, you know, taking notes on the river of, you know, what sizings, recreationals you use and with which kind of hands can be very, very powerful in time and can actually bring you a lot of EV. Yeah, so we've um, just got a comment from the from YouTube. It's from Martin, who says, I don't play much poker. I've won a gold pass on PokerStars for a live event in Barcelona. If I sign up, is there help there to get me prepared for the event? Um, I would say there's loads of uh, fantastic MTT coaches on the site. Um, so just look in here now. There's uh, players like Fader Holtz, Jungle Man, uh, Phil Galfond, uh, who else? There's, there's loads of uh, Stephen Chidwick as well, who is everyone knows is crushing the tournament poker scene. So lots of really, really good tournament players on Run It Once. Uh, obviously, we're focusing on cash games here, but yeah, Run It Once has lots of lots of great tournament players as coaches. Um, also, if my information is correct, if I remember correctly, there are also some learning paths that you can use um, so you don't have, you know, to search for the video yourselves and you can, you know, just take it in order and prepare, you know, to be, um, to play your best when you're going to show up at the tournament. Yeah, for sure. I think the learning paths are really good for everybody. Yeah. 
Okay, should we go next hand then? Yep, let's do it. And yeah, something I just wanted to mention just really quickly I there really was... I have we, to, we, we... to run to the toilet, so mention that while I do this, okay? Okay. Um, so yeah, something I just wanted to mention lastly about that hand was you, you sometimes see recreationals there with 810. And of course, if you go for a raise to 14 or 15 big blinds, they're, they're, they're nearly always going to call it 810. Um, in order to get them to fold, which I think you can get them to fold most of their range on the river, you, you will have to use a bigger size in. Um, but I think that's key there is if you are willing to put a big portion of your stack in, I think you can almost get them to fold their whole range. Um, especially when you have that note. Now that we have that note against a player that his uh, bet size in rep, reps his hand strength, uh, if you stick in a lot of big blinds on that river, you are going to get him to fold probably his whole range. So just be careful there because when we say raise river, sometimes people will raise, start to raise the river, but they'll only go to maybe 15 or 16 big blinds. And of course, there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of like two pair um, in a recreationals range on that run out. So yeah, I don't think they're going to fold to you know three x or four x raises. But if you if you're putting in um, you know, 40 or 45 big blinds, I think they're going to find it very hard to continue with their whole range. So I think a really big raise there would um, outperform anything else. Okay, sounds like Alexandra's coming back just for the next hand. Did you really miss me? Too much. Okay. Oops. Only because you have to press the button, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, okay, we face. Oh, no, we open cutoff, right? And we face a call from the big blind. Um, he goes for a half pot donk, and we call. Um, yeah, my thoughts on this hand is I think in this particular spot we should raise very very often and honestly i would raise with pretty much anything that doesn't have showdown value um and i would also raise with with my value value range so yeah i think i would actually raise here with most of my range because in these spots recreationals really really tend to donk way too much um and it's almost never with trips and so they are usually just donking gar garbage and I think this is a very good spot to apply pressure and just go for a raise and then a turn barrel and even a river shop and this might sound panty to some of you but it's actually a really really high we play um, particularly on these paired boards but also on a lot of other textures against um, donks that are up to up to half pot so yeah I think I would like to see a raise here um, what about you Paul? Yeah, so just to, to break down um, a couple of things you've talked about and the mechanics behind that, because I wouldn't advise everyone to start raising raising uh, flop dunks, uh, betting turns and jamming rivers all the time, but specifically what's going on in this hand is you will find a lot of recreationals with a super wide range, and they very often perceive us to have missed this board, which is true, but we do still have uh, 3x, we still have a lot of 7x, and we still have our overpairs. So it's not as if we completely miss. Now, on a board like 373, um, or any paired board, first of all, you're not going to find recreationals donking a lot of their trips. So when they donk, their range is naturally going to be weaker. Um, but also, on a seven high paired board, a lot of the turn and river cards are going to contain over cards. Um, so even if they are donking some of their 7x hands and, you know, hands like pocket 2s, 4s, 5s, 6s, even pocket 8s, a lot of the time the turn of the river, or even both, are going to bring these over cards, which are severely going to diminish the value um, of their donking range. So I do agree with Alexandra, specifically on paired boards, I would be very aggressive with my raises. Um, but when you are doing that, really think about the reasons why you're going to do it and what your plan is uh, on different runouts as well. Um, so this hand is particularly nice because um, we have two overs to the board, so we can sometimes make make the best hand on turns and rivers, um, but we also have a backdoor flush draw as well. So sometimes the turn and the river will bring hearts, and, and we have uh, and we and we have the best hand. I do one one thing I would mention is that 
I would be very inclined to raise a lot when I've got, um, you know, my eight high through to queen high hands because you can get a lot of better king high and ace high to fold. Um, and again, king eight is not one of the strongest king X, um, but as we start to get through to stronger king X and specifically ace X, I would start to go for some more calls as well, um, just because a lot of the time we're going to be ahead of their super wide and weak range. Yeah, yeah, I I completely agree with that. But again, we, when we don't really have showdown, I think, as you said, this is a spot where raises work way better than they should in theory. Um, we just go for a call though, which is still better than folding, of course. Um, and we turn a flash draw. Our opponent decides to continue for a pot bat. And now, again, um, if this is a very, very, very wide recreational, this is an obvious call. Um, if this is a very, very nitty recreational, then it gets a bit more dicey because the board pairs and Again, what you see in MDA is that pot sizes are very, very underplaced by population. But that being said, you know, some people are also really mergy here and uh, I mean really mergy. He could, of course, have some hands like 7, 6, um, 6, 5 that we still have a bunch of equity against. We are in position, we have implied odds. Unfortunately, we could be dead against a full house, but I think that's quite a rare instance um, to worry about. So yeah, I think I would pretty much always just go for a call here. Um, is there anything you want to add, Paul? Um. Yeah, again, just highlighting how two recreationals can be very different from each other. So, uh, yeah, if this was the type of recreational that is very cautious, very passive, not putting in a lot of money, I would still be continuing just because we have a flush draw, um, but I would be a bit more concerned. However, a lot of recreationals, or you will find a, a specific bunch of recreationals that are randomly clicking buttons. And uh, DJ Dag 2000 minus EV says, I am a recreational player. Is this how you beat me? Um, <laughs> and yeah, hopefully this is the, the sort of thing that we use to try and beat you. But now that you've seen it, obviously, if you ever play against myself and Alexandra, uh, you just need to start donking a bunch of your 3x on this flop. <laughs> and you'll see us triple off for stacks uh, with not very strong hands sometimes. Um, ben Lafty asks, what stakes is this? I think it is uh, NL25. Um, so these are our students' hands that got sent to us, so. Um, NL20? NL20, oh, yeah, so these are NL20. On iPoker. Yeah. Um, okay, so we do go for a call and the river breaks. He goes for a half pot. Um, and yeah, I think I would just go for a fold. I think breathing here is a bit too ambitious. Yes, half pot, he does size down. Uh, it might indicate some weakness, but at the same time, this is not really a spot I would be uh, personally looking to raise very, very often, especially with a, with a missed draw. Um, and the reason for that, like the biggest reason for that for me is particularly the pot size bat on the turn. Because against recreationals, these are very, very powerful. Um, it's not really like they've studied the strategy and they now know on this um, in this node I would have to have a pot size bat and balance my ring. It's obviously not like that. They usually just get excited and um, want to get the most with their value. At least that's what data says. So um, yeah, after seeing that pot size on the turn, unless I hit the river, I'm just gonna always give up. Yeah, I agree. I'd, I'd always just give up this spot as well. Um, no shoving? No. No, I think it seems a bit too amb ambitious with, with King Ace of Hearts here. So this is like it's exactly the type of hand uh, we would we would want him to have. Um, so I wouldn't really want to be shoving a hand. I really want our recreational player to have. Uh, we do have a bunch of weaker hands that we could use. Um, but yeah, not not this hand, and not not in this line. Uh, as as Alexandra said, I, I don't particularly like the pot size on the turn. Um, but I would would be calling here with um, a bunch of my hands, just because we're getting really good 
uh, pot odds. We only have to be right 25% of the time. Um, I think, you know, if I had a seven here, I would be very inclined to call because we beat every other seven X hand. Um, but yeah, what, what do you think? Um, yeah, I think I think I would also call with seven X, although we, I, I don't want to um, ask to keep repeating ourselves. It's very, very dependent on the recreational player. Again, yeah, some people yeah. I would probably like very rarely, but there are some exceptions where I would probably call um, Ace Jack here or Ace Five. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Like very rarely, um, and there are some people I would probably you know fold um, eights, nines, stuff like that. I probably wouldn't ever fold a ten, but like there are some people who are very very passive. But again, like um, these are maybe we shouldn't really talk that much about this because these are outliers. These are only people that you have um, ha have a lot of notes um, on or a lot a lot of stats on. And that's pretty much rare. So, um, yeah, maybe that's not really what we should approach. Just saying that everything is actually possible in poker if you have the correct information. <laughs> what? It was just a funny thing to say. So always have correct information and then you'll always play very well. <laughs> yeah, well, if you... basically call when, when he has it and fold uh, <laughs> the other way around. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, if he has it, just fold, and if he doesn't, just call. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah, this is all you need to know in poker in order to crush. <laughs> so, three months here, then bye! <laughs> okay, um, we should just go next time. Did you want to add anything on yeah, that no, one? No, that's, that's enough, yeah. This is a good hand, I like it. Um, okay, we open, get called. I'm not sure who the recreational is here or if both of them are. Well, big big blind is 53 big blinds, so I'd assume it's him. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if both of them are recreational or not. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you were just telling us about having the correct information and then you didn't, didn't see some of the information you saw. Are you trolling me on the live stream <laughs> on YouTube? I am trolling you, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna cry after the stream so people don't see how much it hurt my feelings. Um, so, <laughs> we face a dog here, half bought from the big blind, which is quite gross. Um, yeah, I don't think I would fall here, but I obviously don't really like the spot. I don't really see the point of raising at all. So I, I think um, this is this is the play to make. Would be interesting though if we had another player uh, behind us in position to act. I think that would make it way worse. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with you. If there was a player behind us to act, it would be um, a lot worse because we aren't close in the action and we are close in the action here. Uh, the main thing that jumps out to me here is just from the data that I've seen, how much recreationals like to donk lots of random hands so he could potentially have lots of ace x in this uh in, in his range when he donks here um but he can also have a lot of six x he can have a lot of eight x he can have pocket nines and pocket tens pocket jacks and queens uh those are all going to be in his range at some frequency um he can have lots of hands like nine ten um ten seven nine seven seven five seven four four five um, so something that's just screaming out at me here is just potentially how many weak draws and weak pairs he can have. So this would never be a spot that I'm ever going to be folding here, um, you know, with kings or with um, even with 8x. I wouldn't either because, again, with 8x, you're going to be blocking some of the stronger portions of his range, um, like 86 or ace 8 um, So yeah, 8x and uh, 9s plus I would probably very often be calling. Um, but again, as we've just been hounding on about, it always depends on the recreational, recreational you're playing. So um, if I was playing against a particularly aggressive recreational who's going to bet a lot of turns and a lot of rivers, um, maybe I might start to make some hero folds earlier on in the hand. Um, if I'm against you know, one of these typical weak sort of passive players, uh, because even the passive players donk a bunch, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be folding. Um, a lot of hands because they'll very often show you the hand strength uh, on turns and you can make really really good plays on turns based on the way they play 
Um, yeah, I think you made really good points there. Um, I would just like to mention that we're actually not really closing the action because Moldland, you know, just chucked on an ace high board, so um, he's uncapped. He can always go for a chuck raise. Um, yeah, that's true. So it would be much better if we did close the action. It is better that this guy is out of position. Um, and yeah, just wanted to, you know, highlight that. But I think the play here is to call. Then this guy folds and we face another half pot donk on the turn. Um, and I think like for me personally, um, I think this is a very difficult spot against an unknown recreational. But on the other hand, I think with reads, it's very, very uh, easy to play like against some guys. This is a very easy fold against some others. This is a very easy call. Um, against unknown, I would say that overall, it's quite unlikely that he dunks, especially half pot into two people and then keeps barreling on the turn, you know, on an ace high board that's quite good for the initial razor. Um, and because they are actually quite mergy, I think it's very likely he, he does have a lot of ace acts in his ring. But on the other hand, there's also a lot, a lot of draws available. We are um, in position. We only need to be good here uh, one quarter of the times in order to win. So yeah, I think I would mostly keep calling here unless I have some reads that this guy is very, very passive. Um, or, yeah, if I expect him to be extremely aggro and always shoving the river, maybe then I would still call, um, looking to call three streets. So, um, what do you think, Paul? Yeah, again, um, as I said, they're very often going to show their hand strength on the turn, and this sizing particularly doesn't help us, um, because this does scream that he has a lot of ASEX in his range, um, but as we mentioned, he does still have a lot of hands like 9, 7, 7, 5, um, you know, 10, 7, 9, 10. And I think all of those hands can continue betting on this turn for a half pot size very often. Um, you, as we mentioned in one of the previous hands as well, some recreationals will just have random air in their range, even three ways when, even when the turn is still better for our range. They're not thinking in the same way as us. And you have to account for that at, at least a small amount of the time. Um, or it just has to be in your thought process because if you don't, you, you may find yourself in other spots where he has a lot less top pair and you're not thinking about these random hands, you're not thinking about all these draws and you start folding too much. Now, this, this spot, I think I would mostly call because again, I think he's gonna show us his hand strength on the river, um, which, you know, it's not the greatest because, yeah, I, I don't really want to be calling down three streets on an ace high board when, when he triples. But again, a lot of recreationals will start to find a bunch of checks on the river with their missed draws. So, yeah, I would I would personally keep continuing here. And one thing I would just like to add is that if this guy had more big blinds and he was doing this, I would probably continue more. And that's because if I think he's going to show me his hand strength on the river and he starts going for a very small size on the river, then again, I'm going to try to put him in a tough spot. And even a hand as strong as Kings, I'm going to start to turn into a bluff sometimes. If I think too much of his range is going to be weak ASEC. So if he, if I think he has too much ace two to ace five or ace seven, and he continues down on the river for a small size, then yeah, I'm, I may start to turn, him, turn my hand into a bluff. Uh, I think it becomes a little bit less good when he has uh, only 42 big blinds here, because if he bets the river, he's probably not going to um, be finding many folds with, with that range, with, with how short his stack is. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I agree, but I um, I think it's really, really important that he has, you know, more more big plans here, but mostly just, you know, looking to call and see a showdown. I yeah, again, yeah, quite, you, uh, very quite... often you can just call here and, and it just go check, check on rivers. Um, okay, what did I do? Okay, this was it. Should we do yeah. one more hand and wrap it up? Wait, you didn't show the action. Oh, what? <laughs> you need to we need to see what happened on River. But if you got that uh, perfect information again. <laughs> okay, we can fold it. Okay. Yeah, I kind of had a quick look over the hands before. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so this is, I don't think this is a terrible mistake, um, and it cannot actually be a good play against some people, like a very good play against some people, we don't know without info, but again, I guess the unknown, I think, calling with this odds is, is quite, it's fine. It's not like printing, but I think it's still, you know, plus Yeah, one, one thing I would say here is, if you're the type of player that is quite passive yourself as well, and you are just looking to get the showdown, then I think fold in turn is probably best. Um, and, and at this stack step, you know, it, it might be slightly better. Um, but if you are, you know, if, you, if you're uh, thinking about different options and, you, and you're thinking about the river jam or like a river raise, and he's got slightly, you know, he's got more big blinds, um, that, then I would be continuing. So, like, I wouldn't, what I'm saying is I wouldn't like us to be, you know, always just like uh, calling flop, calling turn, and then always just... Um, either call in or fold in river you know if we if we get to the situation on the river where our opponent shows us that his hand strength is probably weak we really do have to be the type of person that can, can that can put him in a tough spot as well yeah um i really like what you what you said there uh, because i think that's a really good way to improve in poker um also at the tables but also when you study you know there's just a, a really good question to ask yourself um you know what if I do the other option. And even if it's, or you think it's terrible, you know, maybe just take a second when you study thing. Oh, what, what if I fold it here? You know, what if I raised here? Because sometimes you might get um, really val valuable insights and you're also training your brain to like think of alternatives and no, not go straight on autopilot. Yeah, and there, there will be some recreational, so you get the note here that they don't flop and turn with weak ace X, and then they always check river. Now, against a player like that, I, I, I'm, I, I might just like call everything on, you know, I might call very wide on flop and turns, and then always shove river if he's always got a very weak hand that is going to be folded. Um, you know, there's going to be some lines that you can think of against particular opponents when you get notes in order to play very good poker against them, very winning poker. Um, cool. So, can I ask now? Should we do one more hand and wrap it up then? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Okay. So, under the gun open, a call from the big blind. Are we going to face a donk? We do. Okay, so this should have been the donking stream. We're seeing lots <laughs> of donks. Yes. Yeah, there were some other hands that weren't donking, but yeah, the order was this. So... Um, but actually, I think it's, it, it is something that a lot of people struggle with. It is something that you find often recreationals doing. It's something that you can't really look for answers in a solver. So um, I actually like that there's a lot of these spots coming up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's stuff that when you look at GTA Wizards and um, you look at a, a lot of, uh, you know, if, if people are using solvers, this isn't the sort of stuff you're going to be studying, right? It's not like something you you love to study, but it is a spot that you can have massive win rates because you're playing against bad players um, who play you face up with their range or with their hand. Yeah, I agree. So um, here, as I said, I like raising a lot in this spot, but this particular hand, I don't think it really accomplishes much as a raise. I mean, yeah, it does get called by a bit worse flash draws. Um, and it does get some protection, but I think overall it's uh, still beats all bluffs. Um, it has a, quite some equity against, you know, random merge pairs can later be turned into a bluff as well. So um, I think just going for a call here, I kind of like. Yeah, I, I would also just go for a call here. And again, when, when I go for a call here, I, I, I want to think about, um, you know, what I think of a villain's range so yes he's going to have some ace x he's going to have some 8x and 2x as well he's going to have a bunch of um, spades he may be dunking worse diamonds uh he may also have hands like three four uh three five four five um so yeah there's still there's still a bunch of like weaker hands that can be doing this as well oops i almost pressed the river again um, okay, we do go for a call, turn the six, and villain checks. Do um, you have any preference batting or checking at this point? Um, no, I think I would just play my hand strength here. Um, 
you know, we we were we were calling this hand uh, because we were ahead of what we were theoretically sort of, if you want to say, ahead of a bunch of his range. Um, a lot of his eight x, two x, and draws. And at this point now, we haven't improved. Uh, there's not been a diamond. There's not been a hand that you know improves the equity of our hand like a jack or a ten. Uh, we didn't hit a pair. I think I would mostly want to just start to check this hand down um, and hope to win against hands in, in their range that, that can uh, be here. Like I said, those three fours, those four fives, those five threes. Villains, you're going to see them donk in. Um, spades as well, which we're, we can, we're going to be ahead of. Uh, they're going to be donk in. You know, some random uh, king jack and queen ten and queen jack at some frequency as well. Um, th that's the main thing to keep in mind against recreationals is they're very unbalanced with their donks and they're very often doing it for um, unknown reasons some of the time with, with, with a big portion of their range as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And when they are also really, really wide pre-flop, um, this hand becomes, you know, much, much stronger because it still has a lot of showdown value against all of those um, one and done donks that, that he has. So our hero does check back and on the river we face another half of bat. Um, this is quite interesting because half pot does tend to be over bluffed by recreationals, but at the same time, these ace high boards not really. Um, I'm thinking the thing, you know, a bit from his perspective. I think he might, um, you know, be looking to get misdraws to fold here um, and so on. I think. I think what I would base my decision on here is how wide his range is because if it, this is someone who's, who's playing like. 34, um, 35, 30 VPIP and calls the big blind and only has very, um, you know, a tighter range, I think I would be a bit less um, inclined to call here, but again, someone who's like a 70 VPIP, I would probably be calling. Um, and another thing I would like to add that also makes calling less appealing is that sometimes these recreationals are just very, very mergy and just click buttons. So you might find a lot of people here turning threes into a bluff or do sex into a bluff and then it kind of gets a bit dicey calling this hand. Um, so maybe you hate me uh, saying this again, but it does really depend on the recreational. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, I completely agree as well. Um, and, and and as you said, you know, it depends on how many misdraws and things like this. It, this he has. Like, I'm not advocating for us to be calling King Queen here. Um, but in another spot, you know, if it, if the board was something like, uh, you know, Ace Ace Six Nine, there's or, or Ace Five Eight, there's there's obviously a lot more draws on on that type of board than this type of board. Um, and also, something we were mentioning was that he could be dunking flop with a hand like Four Five. Uh, four Five actually makes a straight on this ri river. And again, this river, I don't think a recreational is going to, um, if it, the range that he's dunking on this river, I don't expect it to be over, over folded if we start going for raises, because it's not as if this range, uh, this board is, is connected with our range in any way. And I don't expect the uh, recreational to be, be recognizing that. Well, I, I would expect the recreational to recognize that in some way, even though they're not thinking about ranges. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think this is going to be overfolded, even if they do have a bunch of weak hands. But we do end up calling, which um, yeah, th as you said, the more I think about it, the the less I like, um, because we're not yeah. even beating all bluffs here, um, and yeah, when that's the case, we don't really want to be calling. Although we were lucky <laughs> and chopped with the bluff, but you know, like th this is kind of a problem when we when when we chop with the bluff that's probably not the greatest bluff catcher. And maybe this guy does actually bluff two sacks or threes here, which is really, really bad for us. Yeah, I think this just goes to show you though that what we've been saying through the stream is, is true. The Yules do see recreationals doing some random things, right? So King Queen makes really no sense to be betting on, on a say two, two tone without a backdoor flush, um, with nothing really going on for it out of position. Um, but you will see a lot of random stuff like this from recreationals. But as Alexandra said, you will also see pocket threes, pocket fours, pocket fives bluffing sometimes here, which we lose against two x, six x, seven x. So, yeah, I think I'd always be folding this river. And social experiment says um, he said at first I think you he said I think you hit the nail on the head though about different players playing different strategies. 
Um, so I think backing up what we said about taking notes and being able to play very differently against different recreational players. Um, and then he also said there are players in my pool at 25 now where they dunk and if you don't fold, uh, you are burning EV. And yeah, that's going to be the case. So something we haven't mentioned here is if you're up against a player who is specifically dunking stronger portions of his range. So if Phil in 29 here was the type of player that you've seen a bunch of showdowns and you see that he's dunking uh, a lot of his ASEX um, and ATEX, I would just always be folding flop with this hand. Um, well, maybe maybe not specifically this hand because I have backdoor diamonds, but I would be folding um, a huge portion of my range, right? Because his range is uh, going to be highly weighted towards top pairs, which we can't improve against. Um, and then, you know, some ATEX as well. So, yeah, against players like that, I, I would I would be finding a lot more folds on the flop. I, I think even something like King Queen with diamonds, I would think about folding because they're just going to have way too many ASEX. Yeah, and um, sometimes or often, you know, bat them on the turn as well, and that's not great for us, even if we do hit a backdoor. You know, we're still going to keep having to call, and then sometimes miss the reverse, so it's not a great spot against those really, really marginal players. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, all right, I okay, guess. This uh, was, I was just going to yeah. mention one last time for the people in the chat that uh, I think for about 30 minutes to an hour after the stream, you can still get 50% off the essential membership on Run It Once. So if you um, are purchasing that on Run It Once, use code STREAM and you'll get 50% off your first month. Um, yeah, and also if you want to, you know, get more content from us, you can also join our Discord. We're going to leave it here in the chat. In January, we are looking forward to host a mentorship program for people looking to escape the low stakes. So if you're interested in that, make sure to join our Discord. Um, thanks for joining our stream. Um, also, make uh, make sure to, to check Run It Once and subscribe so you are going to be notified when we do these streams again.